Good morning, everyone. Greetings to all the participants. I again welcome you today on state level webinar of climate change, a bring concern for Mizoram day two, organized by Department of Geography, Government Sampai College. My name is Ma Son Tuang Chang Te, and I will be uh, your host for today's session. Today we will be having two resource persons. He is from Anhui, Assistant Professor, Department of Geography, Government Shangbana College, and Dr. Lerin Puya Vangxia, Assistant Professor, Department of Geography, Government Shangbana College. Before we invite a resource person, I'd like to uh, state a brief uh, introduction about her. Ms. from Anhui started her teaching career at Kendriya Vidyalaya Sangathan Ikfai University and currently teach at Government Shangbana College. She is currently a research scholar of Mizoram University. She published eight research papers, payroll of repetitor, and presented her research output in reputed institutions like IIT and various international and national seminars. She is a member of professional bodies like the Association of Geographical Studies (AGS) Delhi and Geography of Association of Mizoram Gem Mizoram. She completed her master degree from Mizoram University and qualified teaching eligibility tests such as MTET, CTET, and NET. Her specialization is physical geography. Okay, let's invite. Uh, Ms. Ram Moi to present Climate Smart Agriculture. Miss, Miss Ram and Moy. Miss, are you there? Okay. Uh, here is she. Okay, Miss, take your time. Okay, so uh, now can I start? Because I just joined it. My network has been crap because of power failure. So you can tell me when to start, Miss. Am I audible to you? Okay, Miss, how can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. Uh, please take your time. So, see, uh, now I can start. So, so you can tell me when to start, okay? Yeah, yeah, you can. I can start, right? You are yeah, mute. You are the main host. You can start now. Okay, okay. Okay, then thank you so much, our uh, warm host, you know, uh, for your enlightening um, welcome. And I would like to convey my huge respect to the inaugurator of this uh, webinar, our Honorable Minister, DJ Lenun Tuanga. And I would like to congratulate our respected uh, principal, Mr. Pil Mingliana, for making numerous academic uh, sessions successful. And I am thankful to the conveners, our L. Kumavarte, HOD, and coordinators are Matswana. Even though I haven't met them in person, I am moved by their activity. 
contribution to the academic circles and for all the uh, mesogeographers. And lastly, the organizing secretary, uh, Tarmarema, I am deeply grateful for you uh, and to you for sharing me this virtual dais. So I will start the screen share. So I hope I am audible. So if there is any fluctuation regarding the uh, sound and all, you can just uh, tell me instantly, okay? So I hope my slides are visible. Are visible. Is it visible? Yes, Miss. Miss, it's visible. It's visible. Okay, then. Thank you so much. So let me uh, put on full screen. So good morning, one and all, dear participants and all the dignitaries. So uh, today my my talk will be on the topic of climate smart agriculture. So my name is Romeng Moi and I'm coming from Government Shangbana College. So my talk will be uh, divided into nine, uh, nine section. And this, this typically is going to be out of uh, narrative of different parts of India so that extract what things we need to take as in the case of Mizoram context. So coming to my introduction, a growing population and changing uh, diets are driving up the demands for food. Production is struggling to keep up as crop yields level off in many parts of the world. So uh, as in the case of this, ocean health declines and even natural resources from different parts of the world, including soils, water, and biodiversity. So they are stretched dangerously, as we can see from the picture in the slides. So a 2020 report of AO uh, states that nearly six, 690 million pop population or 8.9% of the global population are, are hungry. And this, this has stated that 60 million will be upgraded in five years. So the food security challenges will only become more difficult as in the case of the world uh, demographic scenario. So as the world will need to produce around more than 70% of the food by 2020 to feed an estimated 9 billion population. So we need to start up and, and we need to take initiative in, in terms of uh, higher value production in agriculture. So the challenges is, is intensified by agricultural extreme vulnerability to climate change and this climate change negative impacts are already feeling. And in the form of increasing temperatures, weather variability, shifting agro ecosystem boundaries, invasive crops and pests. So sustainable investment is required in this case because farmers face many problems due to cli climate change and, and our world also uh, face difficulties because of the agriculture induced. So I'm going to uh, take into consideration of the two uh, dire studies. So see, as we can see from these slides, the problem works also in reverse, as I have mentioned just now. So it also enhance, see, agriculture product also enhance uh, the population feeding, but in the meantime, it also create problem to the environment as well. So here we can see that it currently generates 19 to 29% of total greenhouse gases emission. So here, additionally, it means that one by food produced globally is either lost or wasted. So addressing this one is, you know, like a, key, uh, a quick call to the environmentalists and for the whole academic scenario. So coming to this uh, greenhouse gas emission, see uh, this, this data has been acquired from, from Agriculture and Land Use National Greenhouse Gas Inventory software, uh, which is based on IPCC guidelines for National Greenhouse Gases Inventory. So here we can see that field crops resulted in the total Uh, 
and begin contributing at the computers. This is 30 person acquainted by. Okay, let me start start the screen again. I am using mobile data, so I'm so sorry for the inconveniences. There are, you know, certain power fluctuation here in my area. So I'll go back to my. Uh, such as urea and incorporation of crop residue to the soil results in carbon dioxide emission. So greenhouse gases emanating from the application of synthetic fertilizers like lime and crop residue also has huge impact in the emission of greenhouse gases. So, uh, so the other table which I pointed on my cursor, let me put on full screen again. So I would like to uh, uh, inform all the participants that if you want to uh, see clearly about the facts and figures, you can just zoom from your phone and or else if you use a touch screen laptop, you can just uh, tap it and zoom just like the image we zoom in WhatsApp. So you can just zoom out my uh, data and all. So let's continue. This results shows that greenhouse gases per area, I don't know why my slides is moving, okay. Per area has the optimum application of synthetic fertilizers residue. So coming to the types of uh, crops that emits heat a lot. So here we have maize, wheat, sugarcane, and tomato. It has huge, uh, emission of greenhouse gases, which are planted from the production of, uh, you know, tomatoes. So these are the biggest contributors, biggest contributors uh, which we have found from crop cultivation, even in uh, ISOL. So this is the population trend of the world. In 1960, the whole population of uh, globe account for 3 billion and it doubles in 1999 and in 2014 the world population reached 7.2 billion and it is projected to be more than 9 billion in 2050 so food security needs to be taken into consideration so in the meantime we are facing up problems like natural resources diminishing rate and ecosystem are also like in the decreasing trend. So it, in total, we have experienced global warming as well as the climate changing. So going to the climate change, see, uh, I will not go in detail about the basics of climate change because yesterday we have heard a lot about it. So I will not go into detail, uh, but one thing I would like to highlight is that we need to tackle global warming and climate a lot. So applications of applications of softwares or or applications of manure and natural and Mid main things are required for this. So coming to our topic, uh, climate smart agriculture. So first, climate smart agriculture helps to guide actions needed to transform. So it helps needed to transform uh, the rearranged agriculture system to effectively support to effectively support 
the transformation, CSA aims to tackle three main objectives like sustainable increasing and productivity and incomes. So CSA is an approach for developing agriculture strategies to, okay, uh, excuse me, the audience. Now my uh, power has come, so let me switch my connection to Wi-Fi. Okay, uh, while Miss switch her uh, uh, internet connection, uh, all the participants, please uh, listen it carefully. And after her presentation, there will be a time for asking questions. So I'd like to say that. So uh, please be ready to ask questions after her presentation. Okay, I'm so sorry. So now it's I hope okay. I can restart again. Power has come. I'm so sorry for the inconvenience and line cut. So coming to climate change, am I still audible, please? Can you tell me? Yes, miss, uh, your, uh, but your screen is not visible. So is it visible now? Yes, it is. Okay. So, so coming to the climate change again, see uh, here, as we know that climate change is already imperiling the livelihood of farmers around the globe by, by exaggerating the draft heat waves and floods and other extreme weather events, as well as uh, creating an uh, influx of new pests and diseases worldwide. And, and we have experienced 5 million smallholder farms produce for 80% of the food consumed in Asia and in Sub-Saharan Africa. And it provides livelihood for more than 2 billion population. So in arid and semi-arid region of the world, like in the Middle East and all, uh, okay, most food insecure people like dry land agriculture is particularly vulnerable to drought. So unless uh, there are usual emission trends are altered, additional warming will increasingly uh, devastated these vulnerable agricultural communities. So it is very simple and logic concept that food and water security and energy access already facing developing countries. Hence, developing countries also want to address change through the development framework. So we often have a problem uh, with developing countries. So uh, there is an urgent need for strategies that provide a triple win uh, solution simultaneously. So let's go to the next slides. It's my cursor. Mm. So coming to the history of uh, CSA, here we can see that uh, the term generally developed back in 2009 and the first global conference on food security, agriculture and climate change has been uh, held way back in 2010, just after uh, the development of the term. So, and the second global conference was held at Vietnam in 2012 and the third as well in uh, South Africa. So there have been climate smart agriculture in the global uh, 
scenario. So three times like that. So coming to the real concept of uh, CSA, firstly, an integrated approach to developing technical policy and investment conditions are an important integrating approach. And also what is also a new thing is the fact that the multiple challenges faced by agriculture and food systems are addressed simultaneously and holistically, which in turn helps avoid uh, the policies and, and legislation for financing. So secondly, we have the CSA uh, brings together practices, policies and investment conditions that are not necessarily new, but are used in the context of climate change which are unfamiliar to the farmers. And, and it also integrates the three dimensions of sustainable development like economic, as we have already mentioned in the introductory part, social and environmental by jointly addressing food security and the climate changes. So these are the CCSA concepts. So it is very uh, simple and easy to, to operate in the mechanized and in the uh, non-mechanized farm. So coming to the next slides, next slides, next slides. Okay, so these are the objectives of CSA. Generally, these objectives can be shortened by sustainability, more productivity, uh, climate resilience, as well as the climate change reduction. So these are the three main simple objectives of the climate smart agriculture. So uh, if these three goals are, are fulfilled successfully, we hope that carbon will be sink to the increasing production from farm outputs. So uh, going to the overview of uh, climate smart agriculture here, uh, there are different types of uh, climate overview, but here I have selected two, two overview, which are also known as the characteristics of the climate smart agriculture. So firstly, climate smart agriculture address the complex interrelated to the challenges of food security, development and climate change, and identifies integrated options to create synergies and to reduce the trade-offs. And secondly, uh, this, Climate smart agriculture recognizes that, that these options will be shaped by specific country contexts and capacities, as well as socio-economic and environmental situations. So this is also a, a, a subset of the previous points. So thirdly, this climate smart agriculture assess the interaction uh, between different sectors of the economy, like you know, uh, agriculture and its allied, it may be livestock, it may be crop production, and also it address to the needs of different stakeholders. So on the fourth point here, we have seen very important points for developing countries like India, because in India, uh, Every after five years, we are adopting new strategies, policies and actions and different types of incentives by uh, different types of uh, new government whenever we, uh, we are adopting. So this climate smart agriculture identifies barriers for, for mere adoption, especially for the farmers, and it provides appropriate solutions in terms of different types of policies and to, to apply their strategies, actions and incentives in a coherent way. So uh, let's move on to the next characteristics. So here we can uh, have uh, another very, very important, which are related to the policies again, but these are based on the institutions. So here, climate smart agriculture seek to create enabling environment through a better alignment. So see uh, if, if an area, as in the case of my research way back in 2017, in my water set, I have a wind there. And the main problem is that there are too much uh, policies and you know, like uh, they don't have proper time to fulfill one because the new one came before the completion of the previous policies. So these problems is very, you know, like relevant as in the case of the developing countries, especially in tribal areas like Mizoram. So 
This CSA seeks to create an enabling environment through a better alignment. So it joins together different policies and investment uh, through different types of government institutions or either non-governmental or even the, you know, the layman institutions, which they known as like, uh, which they often call as the farmers union. So secondly, uh, this climate smart agriculture strive to achieve multiple objectives with the understanding that priorities need to be set on the collective decision because see uh, dwelling on a, a democratic country we also uh, need to have very good and effective collective decision which are not decisive at all which will make a different uh, perspective on development and which will make benefits and further traits of of our agriculture product so and next point uh, we need to prioritize the strengthening of livelihoods, especially those of the small farmers by improving uh, access to different types of services, knowledge and resources, including the genetic resources. And here, one of the most important thing that I would like to mention is, is that financial products and markets are one of the foremost important, which most of the farmers are unaware, as in the case of Mizoram and as and in different parts of the rural areas across the world. So CSN needs to address to adaptation and builds resilience to shocks, and especially those uh, related to the climate change, as we know that you know, there are also uh, numerous insurance company to take care of such. So coming to the uh, next uh, point, these are the uh, characteristic of the climate smart agriculture. So here we have uh, to consider climate change mitigation as a potential secondary co-benefits, especially in the low income agriculture based population like India, okay? And the last characteristics of the climate uh, smart agriculture is that it seeks to identify opportunities to access any types of climate related financing and integrated it with traditional sources of agriculture investment finance here. I would also like to mention that when talking uh, about the context of agriculture and its allied activities, so livestock is also one of the most important uh, agriculture activities in India. So going to the approaches of climate smart agriculture. So here I have made a very beautiful uh, diagram to show smart agriculture in just one vase. So here we can see that climate uh, smart agriculture contributes to the achievement of this uh, orange ball. I hope you can see it. This is the sustainable development goals. So uh, this CSA works with SDGs, okay, which are popularly known as sustainable development goals uh, through the development of economic, social, and environment. And this uh, green, green economy, which, which has been denoted uh, by green wall, shows that we need green economy for resource efficiency and to, to attain the status of resilience. So, and the blue ball, signifies the focuses on availability of dimensions for food security, like, you know, it, it should covers the accessibility, utilization and stability. So these three are the key components and the approaches to study and the approaches to, you know, keep and keep practically uh, active, active to the efficacy and resilience of the climate smart agriculture. So, Let's move on to the next slide. So here, we should know that when we talk about climate smart agriculture, it doesn't always signifies about the hi-fi technology, okay? But it just harmonize and synchronize the practices and policies. And it also avoid different types of policies coming together at one pace. So uh, it is very important to avoid contradictory and conflicting policies by internally managing uh, the trade and synergies take up by different government that come up 
within a short span of time. So these approaches also needs to guide the change of agriculture system to address the food scarcity and food security, which, which in turn led to the climate change. So these are very uh, three important points that I want all of the participants to understand, okay? Because see, when we talk about smart, we often uh, uh, think about very hi-fi types of technology and all, but when it comes to climate smart agriculture, it means, see, uh, to utilize our, our existing uh, resources in a coherent way, coherent and very wise way. So, in India, we are very, very fortunate that different types of supporting institutions are there and, and around the globe. See, globally, uh, we have International Food Policy Research Institute. So these international uh, supporting institutes are having subsets in different parts of the country, including India. So we are fortunate enough that there are supporting institutions who will take up the the climate smart agriculture. So let's mention some of them. So here we have the World Bank, which take care of the uh, resiliency and we have climate change, agriculture and food security. And likewise, we're having World Food Program and UNEP and FAO, okay. And then uh, most of the information that we get from different countries have been published by FAO. So going to the approaches, See, uh, CSA is a multidisciplinary approach and talking about this, we can study it in different ways. So here we can study through uh, 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 landscape management, water management, soil management, as well as energy management. So one thing uh, that I would like to highlight is that, see in hilly areas, we may need water management and soil management that is easily feasible, but in plains and all, they might, you know, like have abundant control of energy. So energy management may be easier for them to follow up. So see, this type of approaches are brought up by, by the propaganda of climate smart agriculture. So we can follow any of them based on our terrain. So coming to the coordination across agriculture sector, typically uh, uh, we can divide it into five, but I have highlighted into four major. So coming to the crops. When we uh, are trying to make crop management in a climate resilience way, we need to adopt a kind of intercropping to maximize different type of space and pest control and cash crops. So I would like to uh, give example like this. Okay, see, um, uh, in Mizoram, we have experienced plantation crops, uh, maybe around five years back or around uh, five to 10 years back. So, so generally when the government initiated the, 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 or propagate different types of plantation crops to the farmers, they used to tell them how much space needs to be, you know, uh, kept within each crop. So that is very important for proper growth and pest control also. So, and under this crop management, we have new crop varieties like, you know, which are more, more susceptible to the, uh, you know, like wean, draft, and, and in plain areas, it may also be flood tolerant. And this, uh, this CSA initiative requires improved storage and processing techniques, which are a kind of, you know, upgradable terms. And it also needs the underground crops like state plants to reduce wind damage and composing and organic fertilizers are also very important here. I am talking about organic fertilizers, okay? Not about the synthetic fiber fertilizers. So uh, mulching and uh, shade house also plays an important role in, in finalizing the crop management. So coming to the livestock portion here. So CSA, initiated improved feeding strategies like, you know, for example, uh, uh, we have adopted the cut and carry method in Mizoram and also uh, to adopt the rotational grazings like 
to grow suitable crops with proper management and to feed animals, okay, to feed animals, just like that, uh, the previous traditional nomadic farming. So thirdly, we have manual treatment uh, and to improve livestock health. So it is very important. And sometimes, uh, according to my opinion, I don't know what's yours, but according to my opinion, livestock is more profitable uh, in spite of their epidemics and all. So animal husbandry improvement uh, is one of the core standpoint of uh, climate smart agriculture. So next here we have soil and water. <clears throat> Conservation of agriculture has given a new page to soil and water management. So uh, we can use minimum tillage. So in hilly areas, we are using a uh, contour planting. So use mounds to plants on slopes also. So we can use this grass barrier, which I have seen at mud water set at Sertip also. And I have seen it uh, in uh, different patches of, of, of WRC, okay, with rice cultivation across the state in Mizoram. So we also often use stone barriers and in plain area, uh, they are using a uh, check dams to control soil and water. And they sometimes use eyebrow terraces to plant on slopes and also pellets, bamboos, whenever it's possible. So water storage and uh, rainwater harvesting is very, very important and very crucial for, for, for rain fed agriculture like Mizora. And, and lastly, we have agroforestry. So when we talk about agroforestry, uh, it is a combination of uh, agriculture and forestry in which boundary trees and wind breaks are initiated. So we need to plant nitrogen fixing trees on farms. So according to the initiative of the Climate Smart Agriculture, nitrogen fixing trees on farms are very, very crucial for this. And multipurpose trees like fruit trees are also used in windbreaker and even fruit or curds. So apart from this, I have, uh, so, I have one very important thing to highlight apart from this four uh, coordination that is integrated food energy system. So when we talk about integrated food energy system, it refers to the formulation and production of biogas, which we can uh, harness even from human and even from the livestock. So in order to improve the stuff consumption and we can also harness solar power and ramp pumps for irrigation and, and, and also the adoption of gravity fed irrigation system are also, you know, a very important thing in the formulation of this climate smart agriculture into action. So coming to the roles of institutions, when we talk about institutions here, it, it refers to three main things like financial, government supports, and the research centers, including colleges and universities. So let's dive deeper into these points. So the first point is uh, producing and sharing technical knowledge. So under this, there are institutions that provide and share information like I have already mentioned the international in institution in the previous slides that help people translate the information into knowledge. So. Uh, Circulation of knowledge is very important as we know that, you know, since time immemorial, knowledge is a driven force of innovation. So secondly, we have providing financial services. So here it talks mainly about the credit management and access to markets. So these institutions are generally organizations. It, it may be government or non-government banks. It may be commercial banks as well. So this institutional arrangement should provide a kind of credit to the farmer so that they could practice climate smart agriculture. So under this, we have credit and we have insurance, we have crop insurance, even you know, like uh, peak insurance also are there under the livestock and um, cattle uh, insurance are also there. And, Social safety nets needs to be conserved and payments of rewards for environmental services are a crucial role of institution. So next here we have supporting the coordination of collaborative action. So see human beings are cooperative in nature. So we also need this 
institutional arrangement to facilitate the coordination across organizations and different types of sectors. So we need to work together in a society and through a bank, through network and uh, through interpersonal, through intergovernmental. So this networks have uh, played a role of knowledge sharing platforms and credit uh, sharing platforms. So it is very important as in the case of uh, developing countries, especially. So coming to the next slides, services to farmers. So this is uh, one of the practical thing that we need to know. So uh, in Tamil Nadu, they already practice these types of weather forecasts and an investigation of the leaf color chart. So under this weather information, we have current weather forecast and seasonal forecast and long-term climate trends. These things they just can harness and they just can get from their own smartphone if smartphone uh, are, are accessible to them. So, and another available options that they have are uh, a kind of handheld smart technologies, okay, handheld. And one, uh, one thing I would like to, uh, highlight is that in nitrogen fixation area of Tamil Nadu, they are uh, distributing, government are distributing so much smart technologies which really help uh, the layman or the farmers, you know, to, to, to measure how much carbon emission do they uh, emit in their own particular field. So that is a very interesting thing that, that I really, you know, like wish that we could have in in Mizoram as well. And then uh, let's move on to the objectives of various farmers to, to gather the needs of the CSA. So here, CSA typically means integrating uh, different types of things. So, you know, uh, to put together into a meaningful, sustainable way to adopt resilience. So uh, it tries to make agriculture more productive and to be more sustainable and more remunerative and climate resilience as usual, and also to develop comprehensive soil health management practices based on soil fertility status. So it is one of the most you know, interesting uh, thing that needs to be cooperated in the farm. So it also tries to optimize utilization of water resources through efficient water management. And also it tries to conserve on farm resources to appropriate resource uh, uh, resource conservation technologies. So uh, in the absence of technologies, we can just uh, have a kind of, you know, organic and as well as a kind of uh, traditional way of conservation. So it is still uh, practical as in the case of Mizoram as well. So in order to develop the capacity of farmers and stakeholders in the domain of climate change. So we need adaptation and mitigation measures here again. And we also need to pilot models like input dealers, research organizations, as I have mentioned in these slides. So this all needs to be cooperated in order to uh, mainstreaming uh, some uh, technologies and leveraging different types of resources. So it also tries to establish an effective inner and intra-departmental, as well as the ministerial coordination of accomplishing key deliverable. So here educational institutions and even extension organizations play a key role for farmers community-based uh, organizations. So it is very important. So let's keep in mind uh, this one because you know, uh, sometimes we used to do things separately. So even though our goal are same, if the way of, uh, doing or the strategy are different. So it leads us to different types of result and dissected results. So, so going to the uh, case of India, so going to the case of, so going to the case of India, see India is a kind of, you know, uh, very advanced sometimes, okay? A kind of very advanced in terms of agriculture, formulation of uh, policies and all, but, we should know that India as an agrarian country, we have faced many challenges to control uh, poverty through development. And it is also a pathway uh, that, that enhances the nations through the estimation of 350 million tons per year. So India's agricultural sector has, has emitted greenhouse gases for, see, uh, 350 million tons. So that 
So that is a huge uh, figure. So let's try to keep in percentile. So we should know that among 100% of the greenhouse gases emission in, in our country, 18% sector has been uh, produced from farm, from agriculture farms, okay? But these emissions uh, are poised to grow dramatically in the next several years because we all are trying to maximize our production because of the increasing population. So here, it leads us to use fertilizers. It leads us to use fertilizers, and but these emissions poised to grow dramatically. So if we are growing on the same trend, if India emulates China over the nitrogen fertilizers, because now they are uh, China is 3.5 times uh, larger in greenhouse gases emission than than India, so so we can surpass them by 2050 according to the FAO uh, prediction. So it is very important that India needs to look into this climate resilience. So uh, this is the chart and information given by the climate change, agriculture and food security, CGIAR. So these are the trend of C, uh, draft, heat wave, extreme rainfall, flood, sea level experience in different parts of the country. So this trend shows an upwilling from 2015. So see, it just a uh, hike, it just spiked like, you know, like anything. So we need to take into uh, consideration seriously. So coming to the next point, we are very fortunate that India has launched different types of V, KVK, an SMS advisory in different parts of the state, excluding Mizoram, okay, excluding Mizoram still, but in Mizoram they have a field visit, okay, field visit by the agriculture practitioners for, and from the rural development projects, we have focus project, this and that, okay, so we have certain kind of projects, so what we can do in ISOL or in different parts of uh, mm, Agriculture patches like Zampai, Sertip district, and in different parts of the uh, southern section of the states, we need to put together the project, okay, into one strategy. And we have community ratio weather forecasting and hiring agriculture implements as well. So here we have very important thing that are applicable in all uh, states. We have NICRA in India. So here NICRA stands for National Innovations on Climate Resilience Agriculture. So here NICRA has different types of objectives, like you know, it, it tries to enhance resilience in Indian agriculture, including the crop livestock and fisheries to climatic variability and, and to combat our, our you know, like climate change. So it also tries to demonstrate site-specific technology packages on farmers' field to cope with current climatic variability. And also it enhanced to the capacity of scientific farmers and other stakeholders in climate resilience, agricultural research, and, and also to put awareness to the farmers as well. So uh, how many minutes do I have? Okay, uh, I think I am... Uh... I am running out of time, so let me skip some of the slides. Miss, it's okay. Uh, take your time. See, I got lots of uh, slides, so let me skip some of it. Please take your time. Don't be hurt. Thank you so much. <laughs> Mm -hmm. See, these are important uh, projects in India which are still functioning right now in different states. So we have uh, climate change, change adaptation in rural areas of India, CCARAI, so in the states of MP, Rajasthan and all. And, and uh, we have adopted climate smart villages, which is the subset of climate smart agriculture in the state of uh, Haryana, Bihar, Punjab and, and Maharashtra. And we have uh, CCA, climate change adaptation in major parts of the agricultural uh, harnessing states like Maharashtra, 
MP, Rajasthan, Telangana, AP, and also I will not go into detail. So one of the most successful projects that I would like to highlight is the last one. Okay, here we have ACCUWA. So uh, this uh, this act as a strategies and plans to action uh, and promoting the adoption of climate change in urbanizing watersheds. So here in Tamil Nadu, it is very successful. <clears throat> okay, coming to the Mizoram scenario, I think I should skip all this. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay, coming to Northeast India. Okay, only one slide to Northeast India, then I'll move to Mizoram. As CSA is a kind of a new thing, that's why I would like to introduce more detail on that. That's why I'm taking a longer time. So, in Northeast India, agriculture is a key player, as we all know. So India is a mainstay of most of the people in Northeastern region. However, environmental factors and climate change influence the production and productivity as we know and experience. So all the existing agriculture crops and some important practices in Northeast region needs to be assessed with specific references, because if we don't have any types of good data, we cannot uh, give a proper solution to it. So however, the existing stakeholders in the implementation of CSA combines with mitigation and adaptation of uh, climate change results to propose of suitable strategies to accelerate. So coming to finally to Mizoram. So when we talk about Mizoram, you know, like uh, we have different types of challenges, which I will go into a quick mode. So climate change have serious consequences since uh, 1998, as we have observed. And it caused consequences on the abundance and diversity of insects. So it is very, you know, like life treatment for the farmers and the extent of losses due to insect pests, which will impact both you know food security and crop production since you know uh, since the last uh, two decades and pest outbreaks uh, occur more frequently than you know like than the earlier times so this extended the periods of drought so late monsoon followed by you know like heavy rainfall so some of the composition that we have known are you know like Cowrie AI and all, like, you know, maize, they are the worst sufferer among the crops, okay? And coming to liming, the, the priorities, okay, the priorities and challenges. So when we talk about liming, uh, any agri-lime such as slate lime, quick lime, also, uh, you know, sustain to kill pests. And then they are used and, you know, like the requirement is very high. So normally uh, in other parts of India, they use 10 tons per hectare, okay? And which is difficult to buy for poor farmers. So uh, farrow applications of lime is recommended by applying uh, to achieve climate smart agriculture. And secondly, we have uh, nutrient management. So under this nutrient management, soil test results with proper recommendations are required uh, for better soil uh, fertility. So the productivity of rice under wet rice cultivation is around, uh, you know, like 3.30 according to the Mizoram Academic Survey. So here, just by that figure, we can understand that real-time nutrient management, such as the use of color charts are important so that uh, laymen can know the knowledge of the necessity. So next we have our minimum tillage, use of crop residues and integrated farming system. So let me highlight uh, this uh, integrated farming system, IFS. So when we talk about integrated farming, it means most of the farmers are marginal farmers as in the case of Mizoram. So integrating systems such as livestock, agriculture and horticulture crops and fishery can be most promising and it's very wise. So they don't have uh, any types of, you know, uh, uh, zero profit season for them. So uh, coming to the um, nutrient management, I have already talked, actually it's, uh, it's 50 minutes. Okay, okay. Let me go into a quick mode. Mm. So see, uh, let's have a view of this rice. <clears throat> this is the minor diseases reported from Champai Valley. Okay. And this is a street rot of rice that, and they are also correlated with early winter and high rainfall during the pinnacle formation. So while warming temperates inhabit the pathogens of growth in other areas. So these types of uh, problem arises. 
So transboundary plant diseases are suspected at, at the present value of some pie of Mizoram. And they share, and you know, like uh, they are very vulnerable because they share long porous boundary with, uh, with our neighboring country, Myanmar. So these blasts are very serious disease in Tampai uh, agrarian circle. So rice blast disease results from the interaction between a virulent isolate of this pathogen. So a susceptible genotype in the presence of favorable ambient conditions are there. So we can see, uh, if you can zoom from your uh, devices, you will be able to see that there is a blackening of stem. Blackening of stem at water level, if you can see. So if you have a close up uh, view or if you uh, can uh, zoom in, you can see the infected stem at Zautlang Tampai District Mizoram. Okay, and coming to the conclusion, CSA brings together the practices and policies of institutions, as I have already uh, told you. And uh, if uh, implementations are taken into consideration, farmers will uh, possess low level of you know, uh, climate change. So we need to tell them the knowledge of, of the traditional methods which might mitigate the impact of climate change. So this is a very important thing that I need to highlight it and extension functionaries are also required at large scale. So, and these are the strategies which I have uh, prepared, which I thought it will be feasible for the climate smart agriculture practices uh, in Mizoram. So to introduce integrated farming, mulching, water management, which are done by a minor irrigation, but see, uh, this minor irrigation department doesn't cover every wet rice cultivation or every uh, jhum land. So we can use uh, the natural gravity system of water management, which are abundantly found in, in, in the internet, YouTube and all. So we can uh, use shade house and we can have composting contour, crop diversity, rainwater harvesting, as we know, it's, you know, like it's the lifeline of our agriculture. And here I would like to uh, stress more on point number eight. See, uh, if we can plant nitrogen uh, fixing trees in and around or uh, as, as a lining, as a lining uh, on the corner of our rice uh, fixation or rice area or in any other uh, types of our June land, it will be very beneficial. So I hope uh, this will uh, have good impact and it is very easily, you know, um, followable. So we can just follow. And number nine here, we have appropriate housing and spacing for livestock. So these are, you know, uh, this uh, VT department take this into consideration. So I hope we all uh, are acquainted with these strategies and we should improve the feeding strategies as well. So uh, this is my last slides, excluding the thank you slides. Okay, so I would like to request the students of uh, government uh, Tampai College and, and the students of Shang Bana College, if they are any, because now I know that they are having class and they are celebrating uh, their seniors result right now. And I would like to challenge you that, you know, there is very good writing, okay, PDF, just one and a half page, which might take only uh, two to five minutes to read. So uh, this has been written by A.C. Zonunmoy, CEP. I don't know him personally, but I find his, 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 his writings on climate smart agriculture in Envy's website. So he write in, in, in Mizo language, okay. So I got this PDF. So this is my email. So if if you can uh, email me, I will send you this PDF file so that you can forward to your contacts who are engaging agriculture and its allied activities. So see, this is only around uh, 400 words, I guess so, one and a half a page. It may not be, you know, like many than that, okay. So if we can circulate this PDF, I hope that it will reach the agricultural family, agricultural household. So let's try to circulate this one. So I got this PDF. So if you are interested, okay, and I want you to be interested in this uh, circulation. So you can just mail me and I will send you directly. And then let's circulate to, to 
different parts of the farmland so that we can make change and we can make climate smart happen. So let's make this, uh, this auspicious uh, state level uh, webinar on climate change lively and be active and you know, let's, let's make it into function. So thank you so much. And so uh, I will give back uh, the platform to our wonderful host. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Miss, for uh, your great presentation, beautiful presentation, uh, and we are also so very glad to have you here with us. So, um, if anyone from the participants have any questions, please unmute yourself, and uh, Miss is ready to answer your questions. Meanwhile. Uh, we are very thankful and very glad to have you miss here. And also uh, your presentation was uh, very resourceful, very informative. And also it will help us for our further studies and teaching. Uh, so I request all the participants to mail uh, Miss Rameng uh, Moi so that we can circulate what she has said about uh, that PDF file. So if anyone want to ask questions, even in Mizo, Mizo dong po kan azo te veka mi si ay ring ring ani ti ka shay la azo do ka zo la win an mi zo lo la zo na ka zo te ni. Okay, I hope it's clear. So uh, thank you again, Miss. We really appreciate it. Uh, so thank you for accepting our request. Thank you so much, Government Tsampai uh, College. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll have, we are moving to our next resource person. Uh, person. There will be no break today. So we'll continue our uh, program. Coming to our next resource person, uh, Dr. Ladin Puyavans here, with his topic, uh, climate change in Mizoram. I would like to state uh, a brief introduction about him again. Uh, he done his PhD in geography in 2018. He started his teaching career in geography and resource management in Mizoram University two years back and two years in government Natyal College. His area of interest is in agriculture, health, and environment geography. His current occupation is a system professor in government Natyal College. He published 15 research papers. Some are science index journals, such as Journal of Mountain Science, China, Current Science, India, Springer, Japan. He's now uh, currently IQSC coordinator in Government National College. He presents 20 papers on various national and international seminars, and one of them is in China in 2018. He also completed two weeks international training course on mountain hazards at China organized by Chinese Academy of Science 2018. Uh, his project, uh, he has done project work uh, like ICSSR major project research assistant in the year 2014 to 2016 and project consultant on Nabar Consultancy, NAPCON in the year 2018 to 2019. His ongoing project uh, is Quality Analyst at Project Simbal, APYE Sponsored International Project 2021. He is also facilitator at Asia Pacific Youth Exchange, APYE India 2020. Okay, uh, are you there, sir? Okay, we'll invite uh, Dr. Larin Puyavangs here uh, to present his topic, climate change in Mizoram. And also uh, I request all the participants to listen it carefully. And if we have any queries, we can ask him after his presentation. So sir, take your time.
Uh, sorry, you are already in co-host, so you can start your presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you, Miss, for your in, uh, intro introduction, a smart introduction. So I am very happy to be here as a resource person in the state level webinar on uh, Missouri. I bring a concern of uh, uh, climate change. I bring concern of Missouri organized by government. Uh, some high colleagues. So I think I will um, go through my slide. And my topic today, my topic is climate change in agriculture in Mizoram. I think I am audible for the presentation. Mm. If uh, first of all, uh, some technical issues we are having in here, the uh, power supply is not uh, here and there, and also signal, internet signal is also very poor, and it is going and coming like this. But I'll try my best in the presentation on climate change and agriculture in Mizoram. So I'll do like this. I'll not go to the meaning uh, definition like that. Uh, our uh, resource person already explained very clear. So climate change, I will uh, do. Uh, is there any change of climate in the three components like uh, rainfall, temperature, and humidity during the three decades? That is. Uh, 30 years, it will start from to uh, 1986. It is our statehood, 1986 to 2015, firstly. And secondly, I will go through uh, productivity, uh, crop productivity uh, of the state, uh, 1999 to 2019. That is uh, the next subject. And uh, after what, I'll compare uh, climate change and agriculture productivity of some uh, major crops. And then uh, the fourth, uh, the fourth uh, subject will be a case study of impact of climate change on uh, crop productivity. A case study of uh, one a minor uh, case, it is one release. So first of all, <clears throat> This is the annual average <coughs> rainfall during the 30, uh, 30 years. That is uh, 2000, uh, 1986 to 2015. So um, annual rainfall, I think some problem in my slide. I'll do it again, uh, please excuse me. This is, oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, my, yeah, yeah, the power, power supply may 
have come so that's why some uh, interruption is there I think it uh, Yeah, can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. Okay, one more, I'll try to full screen. Okay. My full screen is close. So we can see it. it's visible. Wait, 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 please. I'm, I, uh, I lost my screen from here. <laughs> so that's why I'll, I, okay. Okay, take your time, sir. Okay, okay, no problem. I, uh, this in my laptop also some problem. I'll carry on. Okay, now can you see? I I'll not go in full full screen. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So this is the ah one. One information is there. Please move this window away from the share application. It has come this message. Okay. It hides some some picture of my slide to me, so that's why. <laughs> I'm a little bit worried. So, annual rainfall uh, change. This is uh, from the three decades. I have calculated the average, the average uh, change of annual rainfall in every uh, decade. That is the first decade. It's 1986 to 1995. So, if we are uh, looking this uh, picture, we can see minus 5.47. So it means that annual uh, average rainfall in the first decade was decreased by minus 5.4 uh, millimeter. So next is 1996 to 2005, it was decreased highly than the previous decades. That is minus 43.29 and the third decade uh, 2006 to 2015 we have uh, minus 19.34 uh, so it means that in every decade of the 30 years the rainfall the annual rainfall is of Mizoram is uh, decreasing and the next one is uh, maximum temperature average during the 30 years. It means that uh, we don't find the average temperature. It must be average temperature. But anyway, we can take maximum temperature as one indicator. Sorry. So uh, this is the annual temperature change in Celsius degree during the three decades. The first decade, we have seen that 0 0.04 increasing. So we can say that during the first decade of the 30 years, we have increasing maximum annual temperature by 0 0.04%. But in the next decade, that is 1996 to uh, 2005, the annual temperature, average annual temperature is uh, was also decreasing by 0 0.11 Celsius degree. And that hot decade, that is 2006 to 2015, it was also uh, decreasing by uh, minus 0 0.33. So next, uh, we'll go through. Uh, average annual humidity of the same 30 years. We can say that we can see that <clears throat> humidity uh, is increasing uh, 
uh, was increased in the first decades by 0.5 uh, person that is humidity is uh, person uh, calculated in a person uh, and the next decade is 1996 to 2005 uh, it was again increased by 0 0.02 but the increasing rate was declined and in the last uh, decade that is uh, 2006 to 2015 uh, it was uh, found like decreasing so for humidity of Mizoram during the three decades, we can see that the declining trends in the every every year. That is, I calculated like this. Uh, for the first decade, I took average annual humidity uh, changes uh, of every year. Every year within uh, 1986 to 1995. Uh, like that, all the decades I have calculated. Mm. Sometimes we compare uh, the first and the last uh, year only but now i calculate all uh, the average uh, value of every year so i think the result is uh, very accurate i think and i hope so climate change uh, overall climate change in mizoram during 1986 to 2015 that is 30 years i i'm taking 30 years because uh, if, uh, as you already uh, know that uh, to say a climate change, it may need at least three decades, uh, 30 years. So we can see from the table, the first decade, annual change of rainfall uh, was minus uh, 5.47. And in the second decade, minus 4 to 3.29, and the third decade, minus 19.34, and the overall uh, change from the whole uh, decade was minus 22.70. It means that uh, in Mizoram, the annual uh, average rainfall is decreasing during the 30 years by 22.7 uh, millimeter. And maximum temperature is also decreasing by uh, minus 0 0.13, but it is very less. The decreasing uh, rate is very low. And annual humidity is increasing during the 30 years by 0 0.10. Uh, this is uh, the data taken and calculated from Agriculture Abstract, a statistical handbook, um, Med Department of Mizoram and Economic Survey uh, of Mizoram 19, uh, 20 to 21. Also, I'm taking this relevant data. And now I'm just highlighting uh, the recent uh, change of climate in Mizoram uh, from 1986 through 2019. We can see that annual average rainfall during this, uh, this is 30, 33 years. I add some uh, recent years. The change is minus 13.17, that is 0.02 percent. For the 32 years, including the recent years, rainfall uh, average annual rainfall is decreasing by 0.02% and temperature is decreasing by 0.01 Celsius degree, that is 0.0015%. We may say that temperature, we may think before this presentation, we, I think we are hoping that temperature is increasing, but in the data, the data shows that Temperature also decreasing, but very minimum. And average humidity is increasing by 0 0.01%. So I think you may have some question about how uh, temperature is decreasing, but I, I uh, yeah, we may discuss later on. And yeah, this is, I, uh, as I said that 
by comparing the one year and the first year and the last year. It means that we are state, our statehood 1986 and our present, we can say our present 2019 uh, data. If we compare the first and the present year data, uh, rainfall is changed by 16.55%. Uh, it is decreasing. But yeah, here, if we jump over every year annual average temperature, by comparing only the first and the last year, it is increasing by 1.08%. And average humidity also increasing highly, higher than the, uh, the previous one, 7.83%. So some, uh, something based, uh, the way we are calculating is very important. It may uh, show that if we compare only the first, uh, the, the first year and the last year of some decades or some uh, time period, it may be different with if we are taking an annual average difference of every year within that decade, the result will be a difference. So that is a climate change about Mizoram. We can say that uh, normally annual rainfall is decreasing, temperature is not changing, uh, very high uh, and humidity is uh, also increasing, we can say that. So now climate change in agriculture in Mizoram. Uh, for this agriculture, I am only taking agriculture productivity and the year also, uh, it is our uh, one of uh, the backward of our research because I am not fine 1986 data of agriculture productivity in Mizoram. So I find only 1999 to 2020 agriculture productivity. So, but it is uh, almost uh, uh, reaching the two and a half decades. So I'll uh, do it like this, 1999 to uh, 2020. The year is so much uh, sufficient to measure uh, agriculture productivity. It is not a uh, climate, so a productivity, we can rely on this data, I think. So if we uh, see the uh, picture, in the, the, bla the blue one is rice productivity, that is kg per hectare, and the red one is uh, annual average rainfall in millimeter. We can uh, see that the highest rice production productivity found in uh, 2019 to 2020. We can see that this is uh, a sifting cultivation and WRC and all uh, the combination of the rice production. That is, uh, we can see whenever the rice, pro, uh, rice production is high, the rainfall is not so high, we can see that, and not so uh, less. It is, uh, mod uh, whenever it is moderate, uh, rice productivity is always high. In 2012 to 2013, rainfall is high and uh, rice production is very low and 2007 to 2008 rainfall is also very high but the rice productivity is very low here in 2007 to 2008 uh, we are facing we are facing a bamboo flower as, as we all, uh, all know but in the 2006 uh, to 2007 when the rainfall is uh, high enough, but the rice productivity is not uh, so high. It means that it may be that uh, rainfall uh, do not affect rice productivity, we'll see. And temperature, temperature and rice productivity is, oh, I'll skip this one. In the correlation uh, value, we'll uh, see this rice productivity and uh, climatic 
condition of three components that is rainfall, uh, temperature, and humidity. So we can see that uh, rainfall uh, relationship or rice productivity relationship with rainfall, temperature, and humidity. Here, rainfall and rice productivity is uh, related by minus 0 0.304. It means that there is a negative relation, low a negative or low relationship between rice productivity and uh, amount of uh, rainfall. It means that whenever rainfall is low, rice productivity is high, but it is not highly correlated. We can say that there is a very low relationship between them. Even in the low relationship, it is negative relationship. It means if the rain, amount of rainfall is too high, rice productivity will be uh, decrease like this. And temperature have a positive relationship, a positive low, a very low positive uh, relationship between rice productivity and temperature. It means that 0 0.08. If the temperature is increasing, rice production is increasing, but not in a very high degree. So it means that global warming or temperature increasing is supportive for product uh, productivity of rice and then humidity here are also a uh, low positive relationship we have uh, find 0 0.259 like in the temperature humidity uh, supports uh, rice productivity in Mizoram 1919 to 2020. And now, uh, yeah, I'm uh, going to some major agriculture crops. The first one uh, was rice and now maize productivity and uh, climate condition. Maize productivity also have a negative relationship with amount of rainfall that is minus 0 0.305 and it have positive relationship with temperature very low positive 0 0.068 and humidity also a low positive relationship for maize productivity we can see that uh climate we are if we are looking climate in the three components only that is uh, rainfall temperature and humidity do not affect largely the maize productivity but some effect is there uh, rainfall negative relationship temperature positive and humidity positive and the pulses have a uh, uh, rainfall negative relationship with rainfall paralysis is having and temperature also negative and humidity also negative here we can see that uh, pulses productivity of the uh, during the period 1999 to 2020 it may uh, rainfall whenever the rainfall is less uh, pulse productivity is increasing temperature and humidity and so on. So it means for pulses, uh, rainfall temperature and humidity uh, is too high in Mizoram during the uh, period. And oil seeds. For oil seeds, we have a very high relationship between climate condition and oil seeds productivity of Mizoram. For rainfall and well rainfall, oil seeds have a very uh, a very high, we can say that a very high negative relationship that is minus 0 0.6. It means that uh, if the rainfall 
is increasing, oil seeds productivity is uh, decreasing. And again, in true temperature, a very uh, a high uh, negative uh, relationship, minus 0 0.5, and humidity, a low negative uh, relationship. And potato, for potato, we have negative, a low negative relationship with a climatic condition with rainfall and a low positive relationship with temperature and a low, a very low negative relationship with humidity. So productivity changes. How the productivity uh, was changed every year within 1999 to uh, 2023. That is as I have uh, mentioned that I calculate all the year difference within this uh, period of time and I took average and I calculate the change, the change in average. So the productivity change we considered for rice the productivity was changed uh, by uh, increasing Y, that is 0.15%. And maize was also increased by 0.15%. And pulses was decreased by 0.13%. Oil seeds was increased by 0.09%. Sugarcane was increased by 1.02%. And potato was increased by a 0 0.62 so some uh, think we are uh, saying uh, that agriculture uh, productivity is uh, low in Mizoram but it is still uh, some uh, most of the agri uh, the major agriculture uh, crops have showing uh, the increasing patterns but it is not uh, so high uh, productivity is uh, need to be improve so climate change and productivity change we just compare the climate change of that uh, 1999 to 2023 and the productivity change of uh, the same year it is the relationship value the correlation value uh, our value, we can say that so rise and rainfall during this period is relation, uh, related with minus 0 0.42 and rise and temperature positive 0 0.07 and humidity minus 0 0.18 and maize have a high uh, negative relationship with rainfall low negative relationship with temperature and uh, low negative relationship with uh, humidity and pulses have a low relationship with rainfall temperature and humidity for oil seeds we can see a high and negative relationship with rainfall a low negative relationship with temperature and a low relationship with uh, humidity negatively sugarcane we have a low, a very low uh, negative relationship with rainfall, a positive, a low positive relationship with temperature, and uh, low positive, very low positive relationship with uh, humidity. For sugarcane, a low negative relationship with rainfall, and low positive relationship with temperature and humidity. So. Now we uh, will uh, go to the case study of my uh, minor uh, study area. That is our my village. This is the location of uh, my village. That is Tualcheng. It is in uh, some high district. Through this uh, method, I have uh, surveyed during the year 2004 and 2014 only one decade. And uh, primary data and secondary data I have used and 60% household I have surveyed based on that 
I take this uh, climate change data. Climate change data I have taken like 2004 was all, all, all data was approximately uh, measured by some uh, villager to thermometer in the uh, sub center like this. And 2014, I have uh, measured all this uh, on the spot. And so I have measured that change, the climate change of the one decades in that village. So I have taken uh, this uh, climate change because I want to compare the climate change and uh, crop productivity of that village because we uh, our data having is for whole Mizoram is very general actually we can say that so one village at least one village or one district even one district is very difficult to have uh, a climate a climate climatic data as you uh, all know so that's why at least one village and at least one decade if we can uh, see it may predict some region or some parts of Mizoram. So in our village, some people is experiencing that uh, rice production, rice productivity is increasing and the climate temperature is also increasing. They are believing. So I have uh, proof uh, this opinion through uh, survey uh, 2004 to 2014. So the temperature was since increased by 4.76. Rainfall was decreased <clears throat> again by 0.95%. Uh, percent. And humidity was increased by 4%. And I took this uh, every crops regularly uh, growing in the agriculture field like rice, maize, soya bean, tomato, mustard leaf, beans, bitter berry, eggplant, bitter gut, ladies finger, chili, potato, tobacco, yam, grapes, banana, orange, and ginger. So I have measured the product of uh, 2004 and 2014. I have calculated the change in the actual and in percentage. So we can uh, see in the, uh, from the table for rice, the productivity during the period was increased by 9.19%. Maize was also increased by 83.05%. Soya bean was also increased by 3.23%. Tomato was increased by 15.198%. Uh, Mustard leaf was increased by 9.22. But here we have seen the decreasing trends of productivity. For beans, productivity was decreased by 7.96%. Bitter berry, 3.09%. Eggplant 6.87 percent for bitter gut, it was uh, increased by 4.76 percent. Ladies' finger 0.43 percent. Chili is very highly, in, uh, very highly increased. That is 66.67 percent productivity. Okay, that is not the actual production. It is a productivity. That is production per. Uh, hectare, kg per hectare. Potato was increased by 8.09%. Tobacco by 8.50. Yam by uh, 5.88. And grapes. Uh, so, yeah, in our village, uh, grapes was uh, at uh, during that time, so grape was one of the uh, uh, big uh, measure uh, fruits growing in the village so it was increased by uh, 100 percent and banana was increased by 6.54 percent orange was decreased by 100 percent it means that uh, orange was uh, not so uh, much growing and it cannot be harvested properly 
Uh, and so that's why every farmer uh, leave that orange cultivation and ginger was increased by 83.01 percent so this is the productivity change during the one decade of the uh, study area and productivity change we can see that uh, from the uh, from the figure and climate change uh, we can compare with climate change of the village with the, their crop productivity so it is <clears throat> Sometimes it is uh, negative. I think temperature have a perfect uh, positive correlation with rice. It means that increasing temperature is uh, uh, supportive, uh, very good for rice uh, productivity. Again, um, humidity also, but rainfall and rise uh, as the presented in the whole uh, state of Mizoram, the village is also experiencing the same uh, the same thing that is rainfall and rice have a negative relationship. Uh, from here we can see that rainfall uh, usually have a negative relationship with the agriculture crop production. But here we have a positive relationship with uh, beans, eggplant, bitter berry, and uh, here banana. Only uh, beside this, all that uh, agriculture crops have a negative relationship with rainfall. It means that our rainfall, annual rainfall, is too much uh, for attaining a high productivity of crops and temperature I think we are uh, complaining about the temperature the global warming in Mizoram but from the village we can see is that temperature increasing is a, we can say a blessing or yeah it is a positive uh, positive condition which help agriculture productivity. If we think agriculture productivity only, then global warming is uh, very supportive for us. And humidity also, humidity is uh, always having a positive relationship with these major agriculture crops in the place. Uh, so that's why increasing humidity is good for uh, agriculture productivity. So we can say that uh, from that point, climate change means that rainfall, temperature, and humidity uh, change is good in a one way. That is uh, warming up of the environment is uh, good for helping for uh, crop uh, huge amount of rainfall Uh, maybe so I have a problem in internet connection. Okay, he's here again. So unmute your audio. Please. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, we can uh, see that from uh, the previous resource person how, uh, why uh, rainfall is decreasing at the same time why temperature is increasing and 
uh, humidity is increasing. I'm not going through that uh, topic. So, but how, how it affects the productivity of crops. I'm not saying also how it affects the human beings and animals, but I'm uh, concentrating only agriculture crops. So global warming increasing temperature is good for productivity, increasing uh, productivity of uh, crops we can say, and decreasing uh, rainfall. I think the rainfall uh, horizon distribution, or mainly waste distribution may be very important because even it is not um, highly um, as uh, taking into whole year, but some months may have a high amount of rainfall and sometimes uh, if the rainfall come to the harvesting uh, season so it may uh, affect the uh, productivity the production so that's why decreasing rainfall is also not a problem if we are uh, talking about productivity of crops only so and humidity, humidity increasing is also uh, good and not a problem for productivity of crops. So that is uh, my finding for that uh, case study uh, in the one village. And now for my conclusion, climate change uh, during the 30 decades we can see again is is it uh, climate uh, is the climate change is found in Mizoram so we can see a uh, rainfall uh, and temperature is uh, decreasing for the three decades that is 1986 to 2015 but if we are comparing to the uh, 1986 and 2019 temperature was increased rainfall uh, is decreasing and humidity uh, is uh, increasing so this is the patterns of climate change in Mizoram we can have from the government records so uh, I think that's all I can present with the topic climate change and agriculture for uh, agriculture in Mizoram. And uh, I think if a question is there, we can discuss. And before that, we may not think that uh, productivity, we may uh, want to leave a shifting cultivation and we may choose only uh, the uh, wet rice cultivation. We may prefer uh, SRI, agriculture uh, any problem this is not my uh, decision it is my uh, it is not my opinion it is from the government records I just have calculated all this climate change and agriculture productivity uh, I think some points I am not also uh, not likely to accept or some uh, some parts are, are surprising me about the relationship between um, rainfall, temperature, humidity, and uh, crop productivity. So we can say that increasing temperature is uh, a blessing for crop productivity, but rainfall is too much uh, for uh, the agricultural production and increasing humidity is also uh, good for uh, crop production in Mizoram. So thank you. I'll <clears throat> end my presentation here. Thank you. Is there any uh, discussion? We can go on. Thank you, Miss.
Yeah, thank you so much, sir, uh, for giving us a great presentation. And you did a very great job in collecting data, uh, which is very updated for us. So if there are anyone uh, who want to ask questions from the participants, please unmute yourself and ask the questions. Okay, I hope it's all clear about uh, climate change in Mizoram. So we again uh, give thanks to our two resource persons, Ms. Moite and Sarin Puya. We wish you the very best for your upcoming career. And also, sir, we thank you for accepting our request uh, for this webinar. So we wish you the very best for your upcoming career. So this concludes uh, today's session. Thank you all for attending. <clears throat>